What's up everybody? This is Ingram and Captain Jack. Today we're going to start a series of tutorials with you guys that will teach you how to build your very own megalith factory. Now if you haven't seen that, make sure to check that video out. It's the end game of what we're going to be building here. And everything that we're going to do here today will sh <laughs> we'll show you how to build your own facility. Just like that. So part one, we're going to start with basic power. We're going to cover the basics of Bluetricity. This is something that is going to be the base of the entire factory, the principles here. And it will help you actually build everything that you need in order to get the factory up and running. So, all right, Captain Jack, stop sneaking around and bring us through it. All right, the first thing you're going to need before you set up anything is you're going to need a plain alloy furnace. And they're fairly easy to make. And that looks like this one right here. We're not going to show the recipes for the items that we're making because the Too Many Items mod allows you to simply mouse over, press R, and get the recipes. So we're going to skip all that. We're going to assume that you have a basic setup already, that you have a bunch of resources at your disposal, and skip right to the alloy furnace. Now, what does this thing make? So the alloy furnace can be used to make the key ingredients. It takes two things and, and melds them together. Now, the, the two major players for what we're doing today are blue doped wafers, which are a combination of silicone wafer and nickelite, and blue alloy ingot, which is tin and nickelite. And the important thing here is silicone wafers are going to be um, kind of a pain in the butt to make, and you're going to need a ton of them. So you need to get this alloy furnace going and chugging as soon as you can. Silicone wafers are actually made um, by putting sand, eight sand, and eight coal into the alloy furnace, and it produces 16 silicone wafers when you take um, a diamond handsaw, which is the only one you can use. It produces a silicone boule, and then you take that and slice it with a diamond handsaw to get 16 silicone wafers. So once you have those, those are going to be the founding ingredients for most of the machines that we're going to be building as part of this tutorial series. The next step in the machines is the Blue Electric Alloy Furnace. Now this thing needs Blutricity to power it. Um, it does not take stacks and stacks of your valuable charcoal and coal. Um, and it's renewable energy just through solar panels. So the next step that you're going to need to set up is some kind of power. And we have over here, we have solar panels. Those collect power. We have battery boxes. Those store power. We have Blue Electric Wire, which transfers power. And jacketed wire, which we love, and it transports power um, in more compact and more efficient ways. It also doesn't need to be laid on top of anything. Jacketed wire will support itself in the air. And see how blue electric wire needs to actually be laying on a surface, and it makes it difficult when you're trying to wrap around walls and stuff. But um, jacketed blue wire, jacketed red wire, uh, any of the jacketed wires will actually support themselves in the air. All right, so we're going to go over here and we're going to demonstrate a setup that we're going to use for the rest of our videos. We're going to make a little power plant here. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to lay down some solar panels. We're going to put a lot of them down. You don't need this many to start, but we're going to make a fairly decent sized rig here. All right, so we got our solar panels down, and I'm going to lay a little bit of blue tricity wire, or blue alloy wire. I'm going to stick it down there. And I'm going to have our battery boxes on the middle level of this here. And in order to connect the power to the battery boxes, I'm going to use a little bit of this blue wool jacketed blue wire. And I'm going to stick that right on there. And if you'll notice, it connects right to that blue alloy wire. So I went a little bit far here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a battery box, and that's going to automatically connect. Now, if you look inside here, you'll see that the battery box is charging up, and then it's going to charge up the storage unit there. But we've got we want a lot more power, so I'm going to put a bunch of these things together, and it's going to start charging each one of the boxes. Now, if you click on one that's not directly linked to this uh, blue alloy wire that's coming down, you'll notice that it's still charging, and that's because all the red power items or all the red power machines will conduct Bluetricity. So you don't actually have to physically connect a wire to every machine. One wire will do and it will distribute itself evenly throughout all of the machines. 
Now we need a furnace, and it's going to be. I don't have any in my inventory. Do you have any? Yep, right here. All right. Ingram's going to drop down a, a little furnace that we can start using, and I'm going to connect it with some power. And this is a blue electric alloy furnace, so it takes blue electricity instead of requiring uh, coal or charcoal. And you'll notice this connects right to the furnace, and the furnace will begin to power up. Now if we drop another furnace right to the left of that one, that will also power up because, again, all the red power machines will conduct their own electricity. So you don't need it actually physically connected to a wire. So here's our basic setup right now. We have solar panels on top feeding down into battery boxes. And then they in turn are feeding into our electric alloy furnaces, which is the basic uh, furnace you need to get started with Red Power 2.